Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of multinodular goiter of the thyroid gland. And at low magnification, we can see that there are several nodules, a very large nodule here, several smaller nodules. And these nodules are not encapsulated. As I zoom in, we can see that in most areas, the nodules just blend in with the surrounding thyroid parenchyma. This particular nodule has a little bit of an incomplete fibrous capsule, and this is sometimes seen in multinodular goiter. There are several synonyms for this condition. They include nodular goiter, multinodular goiter, thyroid follicular nodular disease. And if we are referring to the individual nodules, we sometimes refer to them as dominant nodules. For example, this largest nodule within the nodular goiter would be called a dominant nodule. We may also use terms such as adenomatous or adenomatoid or hyperplastic nodules. These nodules are composed of follicles of varying sizes. We can see that they range from quite small to very large. And over here, we have a very, very large follicle. Many of them contain abundant colloid. The lining cells of the follicles in most areas are quite flat and cuboidal. We can see very uniform rounded nuclei. And in some areas, the lining cells are a little bit more columnar and taller. And these are the more hyperplastic areas. So nodular goiters usually occur because of recurrent hyperplasia and involution. And this is uneven throughout the thyroid gland hence causing a nodular appearance. There is a feature here. If you look at this large follicle, you can see that there is sort of like a bulge into the follicle. And within this bulge, there are many small follicles. This area of protrusion into the follicle is known as a Sanderson's polster. And this is very, very commonly seen in nodular goiter. Now we are going to take a close look at the nuclei and we can see that the nuclei of these follicular cells are very round and very uniform and they don't show any suspicious features at all. In most instances, multinodular goiters have these nuclear features. There may also be secondary changes and for this I'm going to show you another example. Here is another example of a multinodular goiter, and this time we can also see these vague nodular formations. In this area and this area, there is cystic change, and there is also hemorrhage. So we can see a lot of blood here, and not only that, if we zoom in, we can see these hemosiderin containing macrophages, which are brownish in the cytoplasm, or these are also known as hemosiderophages, they are evidence of previous hemorrhage. In addition, we can also see these cleft-like empty spaces, and these were once occupied by cholesterol crystals, so we call these cholesterol clefts, and they are often also seen accompanying cystic change. So here we have the secondary changes of cystic change as well as hemorrhage, and these are quite common in multinodular goiters. Let's have a brief look at the gross appearance. And this is a page from our online virtual pathology museum showing you a coronal section of a thyroid gland. We can see that there are numerous nodules within the parenchyma. And I'm just going to show um, a few labels. There is asymmetrical enlargement. And in the overview, we also see that there are some darker areas which represent areas of hemorrhage. If you scroll down, you'll be able to see a little bit of clinical information, a gross description, as well as some annotated microscopy slides. If you would like full access to our online virtual pathology museum with more than 700 virtual specimens, you simply need to register for PathWeb. Registration is free and you can find the link in the video description. Hence, in summary, this is an example of a multinodular goiter or a nodular goiter where we can see that there are unencapsulated nodules composed of follicles of varying sizes ranging from small to medium sized to very large. We saw areas of cystic change and hemorrhage in the second example. The cells lining these follicles are very bland with rounded 
uniform nuclei, and there are varying areas of involution with flat cuboidal cells versus more hyperplastic cells with more columnar configurations. And we also can see occasional Sanderson's pollsters. Thank you.